report received. Three. Toronto, Toronto, no report received. Three. This is Trenton Military, Trenton Military. Time zero zero two zero zero. Aviation weather report. Aviation weather report. Calgary, Calgary. Hello, Nick here. Got a new radio. New to me anyway. Just came in today. Uh, this is not the brand new Eaton E1 that they were selling. Got to be like two years ago now. I actually had, I bought one of those on Amazon and I actually did two long videos on it. They're probably still on my channel somewhere. I was lucky enough to be able to return it within 24 hours and couldn't get rid of it fast enough. That was the biggest piece of crap I've ever touched in my life. I, I had to go disinfect myself after I finished using that radio. Do not, even if someone offers it to you for like $25, you're literally throwing $25 away, all right? Anyway, that's enough about that. This is the old school Eaton E1 XM satellite radio. Um, it's awesome. Spoiler alert, it's awesome. Uh, you guys probably already know that. I mean, this there's tons of videos out there, but, uh, you know, I like to do my videos and I like to talk about you know, all the controls and how they actually work and not, you know, not just show a video of, of a radio playing and a guy pushing buttons and moving knobs and not even saying anything. All right. What, what's going on? Right. No one knows. Anyway. So this radio is great. Um, you just heard it on upper side band. When I first got it, it was slightly out of tune. Is that it? Or off frequency? Um, to get 6754 upper perfectly, I would have had to put it at 6754.05. So what is that? 50 hertz. And um, that, that's a lot. Um, but I called my buddy Dan Robinson, genius in all things radio. He's got a, a channel too on YouTube and... Uh, uh, go watch some of his videos. He just did a big series on the uh, that new Texan AN2200. Um, uh, anyway, so uh, I called Dan up. And I said, Dan, doesn't this thing have like a, a little pot, you know, that you can put a little screwdriver in and you can twist the main oscillator to, to tune it and get it on? He says, yes, it does. And it's, I don't know if I'll be able to do it here. I'll try. It's in the back. You lift this stand up. And now you're probably not going to be able to see it. But it's in this groove here. So there's slats. There's a super tiny hole in there. And sometimes the hole is underneath the first slat. Mine is half under the hole there. I don't think I'll even, the light isn't going to be right here to show it. There it is. There it is. Right there. Hopefully you can focus on that. Yes. Quit moving. Anyway, I was lucky enough to get the smallest, tiniest screwdriver I own and sneak it in there on a slight angle. And, uh, uh, I was able to monkey with that little screw, and let me tell you, it didn't take much, okay? It, I'm, I'm moving one way the, a small amount, too far. Move it back the other way, too far. It, it took like four tries, and now I got it to where it's, I can't, I can't hardly tell if zero, zero is perfect or zero, one is perfect. Now, maybe that's just because the signal is strong, or maybe that's because the bandwidth is wide, or so. I don't, I don't know, but it really, really sounds good. I mean, it was noticeably off before, and it's, I, 
I can't tell if it's off now. I'm not going to guarantee that it's on because it's just me doing it by ear. But uh, it worked. And it's, it, the adjustment's there. So if you got one of these radios and it's slightly off and sideband and it's bugging you, get your little tiny screwdriver out, get a small pen light, get in there and start twisting it. I mean, the worst thing, the, the worst thing that'll happen is you'll make it worse, and then you just go back the other way with the screw. Um, you can't really break anything unless you get in there all ham-fisted. But uh, anyway, enough of that. Thank you, Dan, for the advice and the tip. And um, radio's working great. I've got it hooked. Um, this radio takes a special adapter. It has a weird name to it. I forgot what it's called, but you'll never see one on any other. I, I haven't. I own 100 radios, and the only ones it's on is Grundig and Eaton. Um, oh, and the, and, the, and the Magnavox D2999, so I guess I should eat my words there. Okay, but anyway, those are the only radios that have this weird antenna adapter. But I got one to a BNC, hooked it to the Alpha Delta, and hooked it to Wellbrook outside. So right now we're on the Wellbrook outside. This thing handles the Wellbrook like a champ, works great. And uh, let's uh, quickly, briefly, so obviously we'll do it controls. So um, on the side, you've got a selector for to select the internal antenna or the external antenna for both either HF, I should say AM, or FM. All right, and I don't think there's a ferrite bar in this radio. I think it uses the whip for AM, although I'm not going to guarantee that. Um, but obviously, I got it on the whip. I also have it on the power adapter. I got batteries in it, but the the light goes out. It's on a timer. The backlight goes off automatically, and even if you push the light, there's no override in battery. But if you put the power adapter on and you press and hold the light button for like two seconds, it will override the shutoff and it'll keep the light on for the duration. And so for making a video, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So I got the power adapter in, external antenna, volume, bass, treble, squelch. The squelch is pretty cool. It Because this radio has a scanner to scan memories. So let's see if I can show you this. All right. To try to let you see me twist in the squelch button. Look at the signal meter. And you see how the one, two, three, the first four bars of the signal meter have a line under it. Watch what happens when I move this. See that? The line's going up and down. And disappearing up and down so what that is is as you turn the squelch up and the line goes under the bar that means any signal that falls below the bar that has a line under it you won't hear it this the squelch will cut it off and so you can use that as an aid when you're either scanning for signals and you don't have to and it will scan in regular vfo mode or if you're um Searching, uh, or whatever. If you're scanning uh, stuff, it, it it'll block out uh, stations with just static without a signal. But anyway, I thought that was really cool, especially the fact that they give you the the, the indicator on your meter. So that's cool. Um, obviously, tuning, and then you can have fast or slow. So. Um, if, so right now we're in slow, so we can tune 10 hertz. And if you push, again, the zeros go away, and now it's one kilohertz tuning. And if you push and hold it for two seconds, it will turn on the lock, and it'll say lock. So let's put it on AM. So we're on AM. But anyway, and then this passband tuning, uh, same as IF Shift in a Kenwood, uh, ICOM calls it twin passband tuning, works really nice. This actually has an indicator. See, see, uh, I don't know if you can see the whole thing. Oh, I'm cutting part of it out. Oh, shoot, sorry. All right, I'll just tip the camera, and then I'm going to have to go back to the other way. But you see it says PBT, 
And if you move this knob, see it goes down or up to a maximum of two kilohertz. So you can shift your pass band up to two kilohertz. Bandwidth, three selections, seven, four, 2.3. All three work in any mode. AGC, slow, fast, and auto. Auto does not select and shift between fast and slow. I read, and the reason I know this is because I read the whole manual cover to cover. Auto keeps it in slow all the time when the radio is playing, 100%. And then it shifts it to fast if you move the VFO knob, the tuning knob, to tune to like the next frequency. So that, because sometimes if the, if a, uh, I noticed this on some of my older German radios uh, and some of the old tube radios, if you have the AGC in slow, it actually takes a while to catch up. Like if you change a bandwidth setting or if you slightly tune it a little bit, it takes, it, you, it, I mean, it seems like forever because you expect it to be instantaneous, but it's not. It's, you know, half a second, three quarters of a second, which if you're expecting instantaneous, that's like an hour, okay? But anyway, that's how the AGC works on this. Fast, slow, or auto. Um, you saw the far one over here was menu. You get that and you get all kinds of, you know, pick settings of the radio. Nothing new there. You guys can figure that out. Uh, AM, AM sync. We're not really on a signal, but it did lock anyway. And then you can select between dual sideband, upper or lower when you're in sync. And we'll try the sync. And then other stuff over. This is memory and country. Country is like memories too. It's like you can put memories in a specific country and then memories. I haven't even messed with the radio uh, memories yet. VFO means tuning. Obviously medium wave, long wave, all the other ones. XM satellite. I, not, I don't have that. Uh, up here at the top. Two position clock. I've got it on GMT. There's your signal meter, goes all the way up to plus 60 over 9 dBs. It's selected for the external antenna. And then you see the DX button. Okay, so that's, that's uh, where is DX? This button here. Now, you, common sense would make you think, because most portable radios have like an attenuator switch that says DX or local. And so you're like, okay, you just put it on DX and then you're not attenuating your signal. Uh, that's not the way this one works. This one does not have an attenuator. And the DX is not an, a, a non-attenuator. DX is actually an amplifier. It's a preamp. So normal mode is DX off. If you want to compare this sensitivity-wise to another radio and compare them in their natural state, unmodified with preamplifiers, you have to turn the DX off. The man, and the manual actually says if you're in battery mode, you will wear your batteries out sooner if you leave it in DX because you're running an amplifier. So only use the DX when you need the DX. Um... And uh, I, I, yeah, I didn't know that. I read the manual and I'm like, oh, I did. I had no idea. I thought that was just like the the local DX switch on any other portable radio. Nope, not. All right, enough bullshit talking. Let's flip some knobs. Let's see if one six one eighty five and six one eighty are home. We're on AM. Seven kilohertz. Sounds kind of messy. Let's drop it to four kilohertz. Let's try the sink. Let's try to sink upper away from 180. 
you can see the time up there. All right, to tune it, I like to turn the sink off. And we'll put this on sink lower. So the other one was music, this one is talk. So this radio is doing pretty good. And this sink looks pretty darn nice. We could also use the uh, passband tuning. So see it says plus zero. If I hit plus, I want to make it go higher away from 180. Listen. Now, let's try this with the DX on, because these are really, really weak signals. See, the DX is not on. So the DX brought it up. sink upper let's move the pass band first down still sounds kind of like a mess Let's try the sink. Lower. So that uh, those two signals there are always, especially depending on what the the, the, the situation is like, the propagation. Um, uh, one time one is weaker than the other, one is stronger than the other. And, um, uh, yeah. And, and sometimes 180 sounds actually sounds like there's two signals on the same frequency trying to come through at the same time. So, so that doesn't help at all when you're trying to clarify this. But anyway, I think this is doing very well. I'm happy. Let's, we're in the 49 meter band, so let's go down. 160 should be Reverend Freak Show. Very strong signal, always here. 115 and 105 are always strong and clear here in Dallas. Put even and put on seven. Now, if we're lucky, we'll get Toronto at 6070. Wow. And it's storming here. It's been raining all day. 
Now it hasn't been lightning. There's no lightning, but it has been raining all day, and it's supposed to rain all night and all tomorrow too. Wow, well, that sounds really nice, especially since it's it's only like what time is it? Like eight o'clock or something? Eight forty. The sun is still up. And again, we can put on slow tuning. In AM mode, you don't get the two digits. You only get one digit. So you tune by 100 hertz. In SSB, if you put it on slow, you get tuning by 10 hertz, the second digit. Oh, actually, oh, I can. There's three positions on AM. I didn't know that. Just found something out. One kilohertz, 100, 10. Nice. And then this thing has um, slew tuning where if you turn this knob faster, it flies. So, Radio Marti. Now I'm going to whip it. We're going to go up. We're already at 6,800. Wow. Just with that little flick. Wow. Now, I don't know if, if you guys remember when I was doing this Sony the uh, about, a, I don't know, three, four, five days ago, I put it on the Wellbrook, and this 5935 is so strong. Look at the signal. It was bleeding through on the Sony. I was picking it up in two different, two, two or three different places because the signal was so strong. Actually, we don't even need the DX. I think that's that's either Radio Habana or Radio Rebelde and then 5010 is the other one so I get them mixed up and keep in mind DX is off Barbecue place, you won't be 
just kind of bought one that would, but my God, I'd no more pay a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, ridiculous. Well, these ones Rusty sells, uh, I think he's selling for Let's try that weak beacon. And they're good for 75 amps, 13.8 um, volts. DX. Put it on fast. Oh, let's turn the squelch down. See, it was cutting out because I had to squelch up. See that? Now, since we're using, we don't have CW mode. If we tune 28209 for CW signal in upper sideband, I got to go about one kilohertz lower because I'm going to be reading about approximately one kilohertz higher. There it is. Coming in, booming in, baby. Let's try it without the DX. Still working like a champion. Love me some original eating. Don't give me that new mess eating. That shit only good enough to be a doorstop to hold the gar garage door open while you're trying to take the garbage out. And then don't forget to leave the damn radio in there when you're throwing it out. Not this one, though. Nice. All right. So we got most of the operation and controls. Uh, I'm not sure I can tell you anything. Uh, oh, I want to experiment with something. I've never tried it, so let's try it together. Put in AM, 7 kilohertz. Put this on. All right, I'm going to hit the, uh, this select. I thought that was scan. Oh, anyway, let's try it. No, maybe that's just tuning. Store, tag, seek. That's what it is, seek. Let's try that. Oh, it's because the bandwidth is so wide. It's picking up the signal at 505. So let's put it on 4 kilohertz. Let's raise the squelch a couple of clicks and try it again. Perfect. See that? Dude. So the next signal, well, I can't remember, 5,900 maybe? There's 59.35 for sure. So the reason it got 30 was because this 35 was so powerful, it picked it up at 30. So I guess you could just keep raising the dang squelch. All right, so let's go back to 5,900. Notice that there's there's not even, there's no static. We're way above the noise floor right now. Lord, come on. 35, perfect. Come See that? Break. So let's try it again. Let's But let's lower the squelch. So we'll go from 5,900. We'll lower the squelch. Watch the little bars up there. So you see we're one bar past the, the signal for the noise floor. There's the noise floor. Let's see what happens now. Now, so we need to go up just to make the noise floor go away, then try it. Damn it! Come on, baby, talk to me here. One more click. All right, technically that worked because, like I said, it's picking it up because it's so powerful 
that the, the pass band is so wide it's picking it up at 930. But that's the problem with using this seek on short wave. It's like you got to deal with crap like that. And then how, how sensitive is your squelch? How, you know, how powerful or weak is the signal? Yeah, so. Anyway. All right. Oh, let's do a little long wave before I cut you loose. And keep in mind, the DX is off, which is the preamp. So technically, we should be leaving it off unless we really need it. So we'll click this uh, medium wave. There's medium wave. They click it again. Now you're... There's my beacon. That's the powerful one around here. Let's drop the... Sounds nice. Now watch what happens when I hit the amp up preamp. See, we get a little bleed through because we're not supposed to be running the, the preamp on long wave in the United States because long wave is jacked over here. There's nothing to listen to, barely, a couple of NDBs, and all the powerful AM stations are just, they got their paws all over it. All right, let's see, 350 and 341. Three forty one sounds really nice. It's two fifty seven sometimes. A lot of buzzing. RFI maybe or just local noise. I don't I don't know. Don't know. Three thirty sometimes, or used to be. Bleed through. All right. Where's uh? AM broadcast medium wave FM FM sounds great like any FM uh, short wave Try the DX. Didn't really help. Didn't change much. What's that? Oops. Damn tripod. <laughs> We're going to do a shootout, baby. All right. Hang in there. 